Uh, firstly, I'd just like to thank the trustees and executive committee of Sikkim for inviting me to speak tonight. Uh, my name is Ali Kimji and I'm from Al Mizan Charitable Trust. And we support people living in poverty across the UK, regardless of their faith or cultural background. Now, it's been one week since the EU referendum, and there was a lot of talk about how people in deprived areas across England and Wales, uh, for example, in the northeast and the southwest, and in those, rural, those pockets of rural areas around England, voted to leave the European Union. So I'm here tonight to talk to you about why poor people might have voted for Brexit. One of the things that, the, that some of the political analysts have suggested that this was a protest vote, and I think that's extremely patronising. It's a referendum. People are asked for uh, what they think, and they use the referendum to do just that. What else do you do when you're given a choice between two options? It may have been a misinformed decision, but it was a choice based on their personal ex uh, experiences and circumstances. The reality is, is that we're living in a very divided country, and we need to realise that growth in London doesn't necessarily benefit people in Burnley, in Newcastle, in Torquay, in Leicester. And we say that London is the, is the cultural capital of the world, with all its operas and theatres and museums and galleries. But there, uh, where is the esteem in that when there are libraries that are closing in other parts of the country? A few weeks ago, a Harry Potter play opened in London, and tickets were selling for over £1,000. But in Middle England, poor children can't even go to a library to get a copy of Harry Potter, the book. This is the ridiculous inequality of the country that we live in today. There's been a lack of investment in housing, education, healthcare, infrastructure and local economies, as well as six years of welfare reform and benefit cuts, which has led to real anger around the UK. People have no hope, they have nothing to live for, and they can see no light at the end of the dark tunnel of poverty in the UK. Throughout the referendum debate, a lot of topics were discussed, and both, both sides put forward uh, arguments on why we should remain or leave the European Union. And I wanted to go through some of those topics um, and how those topics would have influenced the way that poor people would have voted in the referendum. So we'll start with immigration, because that hasn't been discussed enough. Um, as I mentioned, we've had very little investment in housing, education, healthcare, infrastructure, and local, local economies which has meant that people struggle to get appointments with GPs. They struggle to get decent places in school for their children. They're stuck on waiting lists for housing. In these situations, some of us might say, well, uh, why can't we build more houses or schools or hospitals? Because those would solve the problem. But when you're living in such challenging circumstances and leading a hand-to-mouth existence, and, uh, and you have uncertainty in every part of your life, it's difficult to take that step back. And you can be drawn to see immigration as quite an easy scapegoat for that situation. Next up is free trade. Now, when you can see that European firms are able to export goods and services to the UK and potentially undercut British firms, you aren't really going to be too keen about free, about free trade. There may be benefits from free trade that poor people have, but like I've said, it's difficult, again, to take that step back and when you're living such a precarious existence. Uh, for third, the third topic is employment. And in Britain, we've seen declines in, declines in industry across the northeast and the black country, which provide traditional working-class jobs. So if some of these poor people are stuck in dead-end jobs in distribution centres in Sports Direct or Amazon, well, poor people are going to say, what benefits does uh, remaining in the European Union have for employment for them? And lastly, visa-free travel. If you're the kind of person who's unfortunate enough to visit a food bank, you're not really going to be planning an interrailing trip around Europe anytime soon. Poor people in this country are, feeling ex uh, are experiencing feelings of powerlessness. They're leading very precarious lives with no certainty about anything. You have one side of the debate that says Britain will be stronger in Europe, but poor people already feel pretty weak and, humili and powerless. They feel humili uh, humiliated by the current system. How can more of the same be any better for them? Another campaign says take back control. It speaks to the little dignity that they have left. One side of the debate looked at the political, economic, cultural and social benefits of remaining in the Union, but the other side looked at housing, jobs, education and healthcare, things that poor people can relate to on a daily basis. What do you think poor people are going to choose in that, in that scenario? We were warned about uh, people's feelings of powerlessness and disillusion with the surge of UKIP in the last general election. To disregard these feelings by calling for a second referendum or not changing anything is to show that you don't care about the poorer half of the country. I'm not trying to say that we made the right or wrong decision. It's really too early to say that. But my aim with this talk has been to give you an insight into the mentality of people that we don't really hear from 
the hidden half of the country. And I hope you can take a more empathetic understanding of why they voted in a way that you might not necessarily agree with in the EU referendum. Thank you for your time.